the, the reason that had annoyed me is because uh, that whole thing about women having babies and having a higher tolerance for pain was on my mind at the time because uh, my wife at the time was pregnant, right? We now have a baby because that's how that works. Right? That's, <laughs> which is not the most in-depth birds in the bees lecture you'll ever receive. <laughs> but we, yeah, we have a baby. Anybody here got kids? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you sound very happy about the no. I just have that. Uh, uh, that was, you were not filled with the joy of the miracle of life there. But, uh, uh, thanks for reminding us. Thanks for reminding us of the thing we came here to forget about. We thought we'd get a couple of hours of relief and you had to bring it up. To bring up the reason why it's more expensive for us to be here than it is for people who don't have to hire babysitters. <laughs> So when, when you're a new, when you're a new parent, you know other parents who've been parents for a bit longer, they look at you with a real kind of, oh yeah, enjoying it, are you? Yeah, it gets harder. Oh, I tell you, they will suck the will to live right out of you. Ungrateful little shits. I'm still really enjoying it. Seriously, I really am. The novelty has not worn off yet. Partly because he's only five months old, and partly because I'm on fucking tour. <laughs> It's a great way to keep things fresh, I'll tell you that much. Going on tour, the Tupperware of relationships. But he's, uh, oh, he's great though, he's great, I love him. I didn't think it was possible to, to experience this level, this depth of pure, unconditional love for something so disgusting. They are, they are revolting babies, aren't they? Basically, I live with two people and they both leak. That's, I'm sorry, there's no nice way of saying it. Some, it's a body fluid extravaganza in my house right now. Something is constantly being cleaned up or put in the bin or put in a bottle and put in the fridge or something, you know, it's icky. And the pressure that builds up inside a small child is something to behold, it really is. It's quite, nothing prepares you for that. You know, because you read the books, right? There's millions of books you can buy on bringing up kids, you know. That's why, that's why I always get annoyed when, when people excuse their bad parenting. You know, you know, when people are just bad parents, you know, they feed their child crisps every breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and make it sleep in a drawer, and then it's, oh, well, kids, they don't come with an instruction manual, do they? <laughs> no, you have to buy one, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> They're like seven quid, you mean old bastard. <laughs> but the books do not prepare you for the pressure that builds up inside a baby. You know how they say, if, you know, if, if, if a man had the strength of an ant, he could lift an 18-wheeler truck. If I could piss like my son, I could get it right in your mouth at the back there, Alex. Your mouth, I'll go right just from here, over the back of my head. Woohoo! <laughs> Incredible. And the projectile vomiting. And not just the projectile, but he's, he's just totally cool about it. You know, he's already mastered. He's more of a man than I have ever been, because he's already mastered the casual vomit. Something I could never do. So I've always been jealous of my friends who could. You know, you've got your mates, you'd be going and you'd be having a hard drinking session and you'd have some mates who can just go, Bleh, room for more beer. I can't do that. <laughs> I, that's just not me. I'm like, when I'm sick, it's a biblical event. It comes out my nose, like, oh my God. Oh, my can stop. Oh, like I'm pulling muscles in me back, you know. <laughs> And I was like, lads, you carry on. I'm just going to go home and go <clears throat> for the rest of the evening, because that's me done. <laughs> but he's already, from the age of two weeks, he was more of a man than I've ever been. Just bleh, give me more of that good stuff, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's so casual about it. He'll puke on you and then look at you like you did it. <laughs> it's like, what, the, what is this? I thought that was you. Don't think so. <laughs> Doesn't sound like something I'd do. And projectile vomiting and projectile pissing, they're, you know, they're, they're understandable. But no one should be capable of projectile shitting. <laughs> that shouldn't be a thing. And if, and if somebody can, it should be some big muscular Arnold Schwarzenegger looking bloke, you know. And now for my next trick, you know. But not some delicate little veiny, almost transparent thing. It's amazing the force with which shit can fly out of a baby. If I was to feed him creosote instead of milk, I could do me fence with him, honestly. <laughs> Good even cover, doesn't it? I'd like to see that on Dragon's Den. I think that's an idea. <laughs> Whose time has gone? That's an idea in search of investment right there. <laughs> it's just nice being able to talk about him as well, though, because when my wife was pregnant, you know, when I'd say to people, uh, we're having a baby, I'd get this. I'd go, oh, you don't look very excited. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? 
to an expectant father, you don't look very excited. Well, I haven't just found out this second, and if I had, you wouldn't be the first person I'd tell. Because no offence, you're a tad judgmental. You don't look very excited. I can't spend nine months in a constant state of high excitement. I'll be exhausted when he arrives. I can't spend nine months crouched in front of my wife's vagina with a party hat on holding a welcome sign. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting them, but I've shit to do, cribs to buy, that sort of thing. <laughs> and it's just. Okay. <laughs> He's still laughing at your Mickey Dolan story, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly laughter out of nowhere. But it's, it's nice just being able to tell people, because for the first three months you don't tell anyone, you know, just in case it doesn't work out. It's just, you know, the first three months are sort of touch and go. But the first three months, because of the mood swings and the morning sickness, they're the hardest three months for the woman. And by extension, for whoever has to live with that woman. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like living with an abusive alcoholic. I think that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, right there, love. No, I'm going to be sick. I need a piss. I hate you. You did this to me. You can't tell anyone about this. And she got that pregnant brain thing that some women get. Not all women get it. But some women, some women get a thing where, you know, where they just, they just get a thing called pregnant brain where, where basically it's like someone just turns down the dimmer switch. Just a little bit. <laughs> Not all women get it, but my wife got it. And my wife had a long way to fall. I married a very intelligent woman. Bright as a button, sharp as a tack, mind like a steel trap when it comes to facts. But for about seven months there, I was waking up every morning next to a fucking moron. It was incredible. <laughs> I was like, who are you? What have you done with my wife? I miss her. Who is it? She couldn't remember her own name. Couldn't remember the name of anything. Everything was this. Everything was, oh, I need the thing. The thing, pass me the thing. What thing, love? Use your words. We used to talk. What happened to us? The thing. I need the thing. You need to be more specific. That's what you need. The thing, the thing, the thing with the buttons to make the picture change. The thing. I think you'll find that's called the doofer. <laughs> I actually think it's an evolutionary thing. I think it's to prepare you for when the child comes out just doing this and crying. Like, okay, I can figure this out. Okay, you're no help. I've been dealing with you for seven months now. Okay, is it, is it milk? <laughs> We had a beautiful moment where my wife's pregnant brain met my father-in-law's senior moments. It was a wonderful, a wonderful, it was just a perfect storm of idiots. It was great. It was, it was like that old joke. You know the old joke? It's an old joke, it's not mine. And you can tell it's not mine because there's no swearing in it. There's an old joke about uh, three old women sitting on a park bench. And one of them goes, it's windy, isn't it? And the second one goes, no, it's Thursday. And the third one goes, me too, let's have a cup of tea. It was like that. <laughs> It was like that, it was just... My in-laws came to visit while, while, while my wife was, was pregnant, as I say, and uh, they brought all this baby stuff with them, you know, clothes and toys and all this. They've been doing that for years. We finally took the hint. And they also brought a clock that used to belong to my wife's grandmother, and they were passing it on to her. But the clock was broken, and it was missing, missing a hand, and it was missing the hour hand, which is a bad hand to miss if you're a clock. If you're a good-looking clock, you can soldier on with just your hour hand, but you can't, you, 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 you can't lose your hour hand. It's like, you know, it's 12-ish, will do. It's 20 past something, it's fucking no use, right? <laughs> so this clock that did not know what side its bread was buttered on when it came to losing hands and ticked like a man hitting a wall with a shovel comes into our lives. <laughs> this piece of shit clock comes into our lives. And my wife, quite ungraciously, I thought, said, well, I don't know if you want this clock, because look, it's broken, it's only got one arm. Which is just that little bit wrong. It's not a major thing, but it's just a little bit wrong. It was just enough for me and my mother-in-law and father-in-law to just be looking at each other going, mm -hmm. What's that, love? Well, no, it has. It's only got one arm. Mm -hmm. Pregnant brain. Mm -hmm. She goes, what? And I, and I really patronizingly, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure it's only got one arm? She goes, Ed, I can fucking count. What are you laughing at? And we're just breaking up laughing, and then finally my father-in-law takes pity on his daughter and goes, Oh, love, it's not called an arm, it's called a finger. <laughs> well... <laughs> the bond between me and my mother-in-law at that point has just... It was incredible. We're just looking at each other going, What fuckwits are we shackled to right now? <laughs> I mean...